So here's the step-by-step -step process that, that we use in our classes to help people reduce fear. And this is what I suggest people do uh, if you're experiencing that nervousness. Uh, and by the way, in each one of those examples that I just gave you, um, the, the, the people who experience anxiety typically follow a step-by-step -step process to reduce the tension, right? Sometimes the process is, is really passive, such as, you know, flying in an airplane. Obviously, you, you don't have to do a whole lot. You just sit in the passenger seat, right? You just sit and sit in your seat with your seatbelt buckled, right? Um, you do that a few times and it becomes kind of normal. However, uh, most often the process is very active, like when you learn to fly a plane or, or when you learn to fire a handgun or when you learn to ride a bicycle or when you learn to drive a car. Um, each one of those processes are, are, are very active. You do something, you have a success in that experience, the nervousness kind of goes down. So the first thing I suggest is that you want to start with in the, the attitude of what I call the attitude of want, meaning that you have to actually want the skill that you're trying to develop. Otherwise, you're not going to go very far. You, you, don't, you don't have to have a lot of confidence in the beginning, beginning but you do have to have a bit of courage. And if you're experiencing that fear and you don't have that courage, then you, it, it'll, it'll stall that process pretty dramatically. So if you don't have an eager want to actually get better at speaking in front of a group, then you're probably not going to put out a whole lot of effort. And the courage, when, when, you, when you experience that courage, when you, when you um, use that courage and perform effectively and you have a success, that's what leads to confidence. And then the second thing is that you have to break um, the activity, whatever it is, by the way, this is not just public speaking, this is anything that you want to learn how to do, you break it into component parts. Uh, one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make is they, they, most people, they try to complete the entire activity flawless all at once. But if you make a mistake in, in, in the process, as you're kind of going through, then that's where the fear is going to develop. Because if you're doing it that way, then basically you have to be perfect in order to succeed. And that's a, a, a pretty challenging thing, thing to do the very first time they ever do something, right? So it's easier to grow in a step-by-step -step manner. Um, the third component is that you want to master each of those component parts. So you've breaking, broken down the, the activity into components and then master each component part. You practice each one of those components until confidence in that specific part grows. You don't skip to the next thing until you get really good at the prior thing. And, and then you string together a series of those successes and the self-confidence and that overall skill is, is gonna grow as well. And then the last step is then you just repeat the process. You know, you've, you've already done one of the components, you've had a success, okay, let's add something to it. Let's take component number two now, let's master that. And then let's master component number three. And you don't move to component two until you master component one. So as, as a person masters each component part of the process, then confidence is really going to grow and it becomes much easier to practice the next part and then the next. <laughs> and the speed at which we pick up a new skill in the area, by the way, increases as well. It's like a snowball. And um, it's 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 a little challenging to get started. You know, think about it like a snowball. It's kind of hard to get that first when you start to roll it, and but you roll it over and over, and every time it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So one of the interesting things that that happen is that once we go through this cycle once, that that first phase, that first component, that that attitude of want that we talked about earlier, it it it's much easier now to move through the the process because we've already had a success. It's a whole lot easier to kind of move toward a goal if we've had some success in the past. If we have a challenge up front, now all of a sudden, eh, maybe I just didn't really want that in the first place, right? So basically, it's a whole lot easier attitudinal-wise uh, as we kind of go through the process. So as you, as you complete the process over and over, having a success each time, then, then that, that fear that originally kept us from moving through the, the first phase, it, it de decreases dramatically. So, um, so basically, most people... They, they fail to reduce stage fright because, like I said before, they, they try to practice the full skill all at once. You know, most speakers, they, they, they fail to break that skill into component parts and they try to, to master the entire skill all at once. I see this happening all the time in public speaking, but it happens in a lot of skill areas as well. Um, it, it, an analogy would be that, that we like taking a four-year-old 
that's just learning to ride a bicycle and take them to like the BMX dirt bike track and then pushing them down the, the biggest, steepest hill, right? So, or like taking a 15 year old driver for the first time down to like downtown New York to, to practice for the first time. Uh, you know, it's, uh, that no school parking lots, no, nothing like that. Just, Hey man, you're, you're, you're starting in, in bumper to bumper traffic um, or like sending a, a rookie police cadet into the middle of a big drug deal or something like that. Right. So basically that's, that's typically what people do with public speaking. We tend to jump in front of our peers or the board of directors or a big client. And then we just kind of wing it. And as a result, doesn't doesn't work really as well. So I, I would suggest you do it a better way. You know, so basically, um, if you if you have access to some type of public speaking class, that's usually a really good way to overcome that fear of public speaking. I mean, you can, you can come to one of our fearless presentations classes, but in a lot of cases, almost any class will do almost any class will, will help you. The, the big thing that I would kind of encourage you to do, though, is before you go and invest in a class, look at the type of coaching that they're doing. If they're doing the give you some information, leave you alone, let you do it, then critique you technique, that's, a, that's hard because that's stringing together a series of failures. If you have a really, if the people teaching the, the sessions, though, if they're really good coaches and they make sure that you never fail in the first place, that's going to be a better in, investment for you. Um, one of the things that typically comes up here is a lot of times when folks will say, what about, what about toasting clubs like Toastmasters? Toastmasters and speaking clubs like that can be very, very, very effective. It really depends on the club that you go to, right? So I would just like a public speaking class, if you're going to, if you're going to um, experiment with going to a, a Toastmasters or a toasting club, then I would go and check out a few clubs in, in, in at a time, you know, go and check out a, a, a few in a week. Look and look for the people that have been there the longest, the people that have been there like five or 10 years that keep coming back and then watch the way they speak. And if they are speaking in a way, if you look at those folks and go, man, OK, great, I want to be like that person someday, you're probably in a good club. <laughs> if you look at the people that have been there a long time and they sound kind of cheesy or forced or fake or something like that then you probably want to kind of move on to a, another one because there's a good chance that you're going to be wasting your time uh, going to that one. But just kind of keep that in mind. The, 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 um, it, it, the, the, the advantage of going to a club like that, by the way, is that remember I said that nervousness is reduced and confidence is increased when you string together a series of successes. So if you're getting up in front of a group every single week and every single week that you, you have a success, then it's not going to take very long for you to start to experience that, that um, confidence, um, even without the club, if that makes sense. So basically, it's, it's a good way over time to string together a series of, of successes, obviously, if you get into a good club. Anyway, but hey, if you need help on any of this stuff, by the way, reach out to me. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can also you know, subscribe to the podcast. We're giving you lots of, lots of tips. Go to fearlesspresentations.com. We have like hundreds and hundreds of different articles, videos, um, uh, podcast recordings, and, and that kind of thing that, that are there at your fingertips. Or if you want to attend one of our classes, just look up the two-day fearless presentations class. We got them going all over the, the world, well, all, all over the United States right now. And then ultimately when COVID really kicks uh, is, is gone for good, then uh, we'll, we'll kind of open back up in, this, in some of the other locations around the world as well. 